I bid you welcome. guys, welcome to Monster Kid Theater. As we continue Monster Kid Studios' 31 days of Halloween celebration. I'm Rich Savage, and I'm thrilled to be able to share one of my all-time favorite fright flicks with you tonight, House on Haunted Hill. Also tonight, I'll be giving away a special prize package to one lucky subscriber. All you have to do is subscribe, if you haven't already, hit the like button, leave a comment, and I'm gonna pick somebody at random and you'll be notified, and then your prize will be on its way. That's not too complicated, right? Now, let's talk about tonight's feature, House on Haunted Hill. This 1959 classic stars Vincent Price, yes, THE Vincent Price, as Frederick Lauren, an eccentric millionaire who makes an interesting proposal to five guests at an allegedly haunted house. Whoever among them survives the night in the haunted estate will receive $10,000. The guests accept the challenge, not knowing what terrors lie ahead. House on Haunted Hill was directed by one of show business's greatest promoters, William Castle. Castle made dozens of low-budget films throughout his career. His flair for marketing and gimmickry usually resulted in profits regardless of the quality of the movie. In fact, the gimmicks employed by Castle became his trademark, and no matter the film, theatergoers knew they were in for a treat and an interesting evening when they arrived at William Castle movie screenings. What were some of these gimmicks, you may ask? Good question. Well, for one, there was Emerjo, which was actually utilized during House on Haunted Hill screenings. You see a skeleton with red lighted eyes who would float over audiences on a wire during pivotal moments in the movie. That's pretty cool. Castle's 1959 film The Tingler, which also starred Vincent Price, was filmed in what was called Percepto. This trick was achieved by Castle's crew placing vibrating buzzers uh, underneath random theater seats. And at one point in the film, The Tingler was supposed to have escaped and entered the theater. And the buzzers would be activated as Vincent Price uh, encourage the audience to scream, scream for your lives. <laughs> now, in 1960s 13 Ghosts, Castle came up with a gimmick called Illusiono. Each patron was given a handheld uh, ghost viewer slash remover. During certain parts of the film, a person could either see the ghost by looking through the red part of the viewer or not see the ghost by looking through the blue part. Not sure why you wouldn't want to see the ghost, but yeah, I guess that was up to the people watching the movie. And that's just scratching the surface of uh, Castle's uh, famous promotional gimmicks. Now, even though he was best known for B-movies, his directorial effort is held in high regard when it comes to House on Haunted Hill. This film's a favorite with horror fans and was critically acclaimed upon its release in 1959. Campy? Yes. Creepy? Absolutely. I mean, House on Haunted Hill deserves its status as a true horror classic. And it doesn't hurt, obviously, that Vincent Price delivers to Shivers as always. Now, if you've watched Monster Kid Theater previously, you're no doubt aware that I usually interrupt the films with some interesting segments, but that won't be happening during these special 31 days of Halloween presentations. Uh, I want to pay respect to these classic films and share them uninterrupted in their entirety, and I hope no one will be too disappointed that I'm not up to my usual shenanigans. But I'll get back to that in another time. So, with that said, let's get started, shall we? From 1959, House on Haunted Hill.
Their ghosts are moving tonight, restless, hungry. May I introduce myself? I'm Watson Pritchard. In just a minute, I'll show you the only really haunted house in the world. Since it was built a century ago, seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. Since then, I've owned the house. I've only spent one night there, and when they found me in the morning, I, I was almost dead. I'm Frederick Lauren, and I've rented the house on Haunted Hill tonight so that my wife can give a party, a haunted house party. <laughs> She's so amusing. There'll be food and drink and ghosts, and perhaps even a few murders. You're all invited. If any of you will spend the next 12 hours in this house, I'll give you each $10,000, or your next of kin in case you don't survive. Ah, but here come our other guests. It was my wife's idea to have our guests come in funeral cars. She's so amusing. Her sense of humor is, shall we say, original. I dreamed up the hearse. It's empty now, but after a night in the house on Haunted Hill, who knows? This is Lance Schroeder, a test pilot. So no doubt a brave man. But don't you think you can be much braver if you're paid for it? And I happen to know that Lance needs the 10,000 I'll give him, if he's brave enough to stay all night. This is Ruth Bridges. You've no doubt read her column in the newspapers. She says her reason for coming to the party is to write a feature article on ghosts. She's also desperate for money, gambles. You've already met Watson Pritchard, a man living in mortal fear of a house, and yet he is risking his life to spend another night here. I wonder why. He says for money. This is Dr. David Trent, a psychiatrist. He claims that my ghost will help his work on hysteria. But don't you see a little touch of greed there around the mouth and eyes? This is Nora Manning. I picked her from the thousands of people who work for me because she needed the 10,000 more than most. Supports her whole family. Isn't she pretty? The party's starting now, and you have until midnight to find the house on Haunted Hill.
Well, where is everybody? It isn't a very warm welcome, is it? Only the ghosts in this house are glad we're here. Are we all strangers to each other? Don't you two know each other? I'm afraid I don't even know your name. I'm Nora Manning. Lance Schroeder. Is Frederick Lauren a friend of yours? I've heard of him, but I've never met him. I work for one of his companies, but I've never seen him. I've never met the man either. Just a phone call. Do you know him? No. Well, then you're the only one of us who does. I don't know him. All the details about running the house were done by mail. He's quite wealthy, isn't he? Millions. And uh, five wives, I believe. Four, I think, so far. A $50,000 party for only five people is a little steep, even for a millionaire. <laughs> well, if I were going to haunt anybody, this would certainly be the house I'd do it in. Who closed the door? This thing's made of solid steel. Here, unfortunately, still alive. Is your face on yet? Dust and dirt everywhere, and the water barely trickles. Couldn't you have had the place clean? Atmosphere, darling. You know how ghosts are. They never tidy up. Well, that's a very fetching outfit, but hardly suitable for a party. I'm not going to the party. The spend the night ghost party was your idea, remember? Since it's going to cost me $50,000, I want you to have fun. The party was my idea until you invited all the guests. Why all these strangers? Why none of our friends? Friends? Do we have any friends? No, your jealousy took care of that. I had a reason for inviting each guest. I wanted kind of a cross-section. From psychiatrist to typist, and from drunk to jet pilot. They share one thing. They all need money. Now let's see if they're brave enough to earn it. And you call this a party? Could be. Why do you always do that? It spoils the champagne. It might explode. Never does. Would you guarantee that? That isn't funny, Frederick. Make a good headline. Playboy kills wife with champagne cork. Will you join me? No, thank you. Just a sip might improve your humor. My humor is fine, thanks. And I haven't poisoned it. It's always good to know that. Have some. You'll enjoy the party more. Go on. Your trust is so touching. And I'm not going to the party. Of all my wives, you are the least agreeable. But still alive. Hmm. Would you go away for a million dollars, tax-free? You want it all, don't you? I deserve it all. Your jealousy isn't tax-free, and your possessiveness is maddening. If ever a man had grounds for divorce. But can't prove them. The time will come. You'll slip up one of these days. Think so? If I live long enough. You remember the fun we had when you poisoned me? <laughs> Something you ate, the doctor said. Yes. Arsenic on the rocks. Annabelle, you'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? Darling, what makes you think that? Something about you. Yeah, that hanging is very uncomfortable, in case you get any more ideas. Now don't let the ghosts and the ghouls disturb you, darling. 
Darling, the only ghoul in the house is you. And don't sit up all night thinking of ways to get rid of me. It makes wrinkles. This is what she used on my brother and her sister. Hacked them to pieces. We found parts of the bodies all over the house. In places you wouldn't think. The funny thing is the heads have never been found. Hands and feet and things like that. But no heads. The wife, probably in a rage, threatened her husband with a knife and then carried away by hysteria, took a swing at him and simply went on from there. <laughs> she certainly went on. How many people did she kill, Mr. Pritchard? Only two. Her husband and her sister. No one else was here. So there are two loose heads just floating around in here somewhere? You can hear them at night. They whisper to each other and then cry. <laughs> Since our host isn't here, would anyone care to mix me a drink? Certainly. What will you have? Good evening. I'm your host, Frederick Lauren. Since we're all strangers to each other, let's get acquainted with a drink, shall we? Mr. Lauren, I advise you to call this party off now. The ghosts are already moving, and that's a bad sign. Let me apologize for my wife. She'll join us later. What do you have? Scotch and. Doctor? I'll have the same. Now, before the party begins, let's go over the details. The caretakers will leave at midnight, locking us in here until they come back in the morning. Once the door is locked, there's no way out. The windows have bars that a jail would be proud of, and the only door to the outside locks like a vault. There's no electricity, no phone, no one within miles, so no way to call for help. Like a coffin. So if any of you decide not to stay for the party, you must let me know before midnight. Of course, if you leave, I shan't be able to pay you anything. I'm interested in your reasons for this uh, party. Aside from the pleasant company. Ghosts, Doctor. I think everyone wonders what they would do if they saw a ghost. And now my wife has given us all the opportunity to find out. <laughs> Amusing. Ghosts, etc., being only creations of hysteria, your party should be a success. Well, Pritchard here promises us genuine ghosts. Seven now. Maybe more before morning. That's cheerful. Four men have been murdered in this house. And three women. You planned your party very well, Mr. Lauren. Four of us are men, three are women. And a ghost for everybody. <laughs> well, Pritchard, why don't you take us on a tour through the house and let's see what happens. Huh? See that stain? Blood. A young girl was killed here. And whatever got her wasn't human. Don't stand there. What do you mean? Where? It's too late. They've marked you. Ridiculous. The roof probably leaks. Oh, that must be what it is. Who would want to haunt me? I would say any self-respecting male ghost. I hope it doesn't come back. Well, Mr. Pritchard, you're the life of the party. He hasn't even started yet. Wasn't there a man who threw his wife into a wine vat or something? That was in the cellar. There's been a murder almost every place in this house. Acid and threw her in. 
she was supposed to stay down. But the bones came up. It's a funny thing. But none of the murders here were just ordinary. Just shooting or stabbing. They've all been sort of wild, violent, and different. Look out! God, she didn't fall in. You mean there's still acid in there? everything with hair and flesh. It just leaves the bones. My, it's dry and dusty down here. Well, there's a, a cure for that upstairs. <laughs> Come on. said everybody would get $10,000. But he didn't say anything about being locked in. No. Uh, he just made a deal with me on the phone, but nothing about having to stay. Aren't you going to stay? If I don't, I lose $10,000. I'm going to stay, too. $10,000. Yeah. You believe in ghosts? I don't know. Well, I agree with what that doc says. You can spook yourself. I've done it in planes. Seen things that weren't really there. Or were they? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with your 10000 If we get it. What do you mean, if we get it? Won't he pay us if we stay? Ah, sure he will. 10000 is no more to him than a nickel is to us. We were in an automobile accident. Now I'm the only one in the family who can make any money. Boy, I've never seen so many doors. Closet. Does it go anywhere? You all right? A 
something that money won't cure. I must have, must have bumped my head. And the only way you could bump your head in here is to run head on into the wall. You didn't do that, did you? Let's get a bandage on that. I wonder why they didn't kill him. Who? He didn't bump his head. They hit him. They? When you came in, you said something about a ghost. There was something. What did it look like? Well, it, it was wearing a black thing that went all the way to the floor. Weren't you a little frightened at the time? Well, yes. That, Mr. Lauren, is hysteria. But then, Doctor, how do you explain what happened to Lance? Was that hysteria, too? You better get that checked in a day or so. Thanks, Doc. Wait for me in the hall. The ghosts are coming closer, Mr. Lauren. You really believe in your pet ghost, don't you, Pritchett? Before the night's over, you will, too. Would you like a drink, Lance? Uh, no, thanks. I'd like one. Scotch and. Lauren, are you really going to pay anyone who stays all night? Certainly. $10,000. Will there be much red tape or delay? You in a hurry, dear? <laughs> Frankly, yes. Or frantically. There you are, my dear. Someone or something was in here when I came in. But where? And if the door was locked, how did it get out? What you saw might have been a ghost, Nora, but what was in here with me was no ghost. I don't know. I was so scared. Does that sound different to you? doesn't run it just floats yeah but uh, why didn't I see it you don't believe me <laughs> can I
I'm Annabelle Lauren. You must be Miss Manning. I realize this is a very unusual and I'm afraid very dull party. Wouldn't you like to freshen up? This is your room. Depressing, isn't it? I doubt if I'll spend much time here. It's going to rain. Perfect atmosphere for my husband's party. Why did you come here? He said he'd give me $10,000. Why did he pick you? I don't know. My supervisor just came and said I'd been invited. How long have you known my husband? I just met him tonight. So? Why you? What were you doing wandering around by yourself? Well, I was in the cellar with Lance, Mr. Schroeder, and I just left, that's all. Don't do it again. Don't go anywhere in this house by yourself. Now, fix your face and I'll come by for you in a few minutes. But I... You're in danger. We all are. But who? I hope for your sake you never find out. I'm Annabelle Lauren. Were you looking for something? Uh, not exactly. Are you the doctor? No. No, I'm Lance Schroeder. The pilot. You've hurt yourself. Oh, it's uh, just a bump on the head. Which is my room? I believe this is it. Thank you, Mrs. Lauren. Annabelle Lance. You were with the young girl in the cellar. Why was she so upset? Was she? And you don't look like the type to go around bumping his head. What really happened, Lance? Well, Nora thought she saw a ghost, but uh, I didn't see anything. She was just frightened then. And mad at me, I think. I kidded her about it. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happens here tonight. Now, don't tell me you're taking all this seriously. Aren't you? Well, I'd uh, like to find out what hit me. Lance. If I need help, may I count on you? <laughs> sure, I guess so. Look, what's going on here, anyway? I mean, what is with this party, but... This is no party. He's planning something. Your husband? I wish I knew what it was. Must be pretty big if he's going to lay out 50,000. The money doesn't mean anything. He has a reason for getting us all up here to this dreadful old house. Well, what for? He doesn't even know us. Maybe that's exactly why you're here. Well, what can he get away with? Oh, he thinks that big money like his can get away with anything. You know, of course, that I'm his fourth wife. The first simply disappeared. The other two died. Lance, I don't want to join them. You mean he, uh... Oh, his doctor said they died of heart attacks. Two girls in their 20s. Well, what can he do? My husband is sometimes insane with jealousy. Nothing matters to him then. Please be careful. Would he hurt you? He would kill me if he could. all the fun. Nora Manning was almost killed by a falling chandelier. The pilot bashed his head in. Is he badly hurt? The Saturnine psychiatrist bandaged him up. Don't you want to go and console him, as you do most men, in your fashion? You're so clever, Frederick. Yes, I lie awake nights wondering why I married you. 
was rather a mistake. You didn't marry me, dear. I married you. Unpleasant, but no mistake. Hurry up. Frederick, for the last time, I'm not going to your party. And for the last time, it's not my party, but yours. And you are going. I am not. You ready, dear? No. Are you ready, dear? Yes. Damn you. Would you adore me as much if I were poor? <laughs> no. All you want to be is a lovely widow. It's almost time to lock up the house. And then your party will really begin. I wonder how it'll end. Midnight, Nora. We're all going to get together down in the living room. All right, Mr. Lloyd. I'll be right down. Jonas Slides and his wife. They've been caretakers here for years. She's blind, you know. I'm not going to stay here. Well, Doctor, it looks like we have a real case of hysteria on our hands. I think she's just a little upset. Not hysterical. Good evening. My wife. These are our guests. Ruth Bridges, Dr. Trent, you know Watson Pritchard, of course, Nora Manning, and uh, this is Lance Schroeder. Get me out of here. Now, what about the 10,000? I don't care. He wants to kill me. Who wants to kill you? Mr. Lawrence. May I have your attention, please? I think you all remember the bargain we made about staying all night. $10,000 apiece. If any of you don't survive, $50,000 will be divided amongst the rest of you. If I should die, you will be paid by my estate. When the door is locked from the outside by the caretakers, we'll all be forced to stay in this house until morning. If any of you decide not to stay, you must leave with the caretakers now. You won't have a chance to change your minds later, because there'll be no way to get out. I don't want to stay. Wait. Good 
I get who told them they could leave. They never leave before midnight. Well, they've gone now. I was going to ask you whether you wanted to stay or not, but it seems that the caretakers have made the decision for you. We're all locked in now. But I don't want to stay. And I'm sorry, my dear, but it's too late now. Darling, haven't you had enough of the silly game? Get some cars up here for these people and let them go home. But pay them first. This is your party, remember? In spite of my wife's faith in my ability to do the impossible, we will all have to stay in this house until 8 o'clock in the morning. But we have some party favors for you in these little coffins. This is my wife's idea. I must say, I think it's rather dangerous. I suppose you all know how to use one of these things, but in case you don't, you just press down on this lever with your thumb and then pull the trigger. You see, they're loaded. These are no good against the dead, only the living. Doctor? Lance? Nora? Go ahead, take it. Miss Bridges. And here's yours, dear. I don't need it. It was your idea. Who knows, you may want to use it on me before this night is over. Throw these guns away. They won't do you any good. I agree with Pritchard on that point, although not for the same reason. Dr. Trent. Don't you approve of our little party favors? Suppose Nora had had a gun when she mistook the blind woman for a ghost. I don't think anyone else is going to walk around in total darkness. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we're not going to go running around the house shooting each other, aren't you? Who knows? Fear makes people do amazing things. You said your sister-in-law killed a man and a woman here and cut them up? You said they found hands and feet, but they never found any heads. Would you like to see one of those heads? Would you all like to see one of those heads? Well, then, just follow me. Darling, I really don't need this. my suitcase. Just go look. But it was in there. A woman's head. Nora, I think you're a little upset. Would you care for a sedative? Get out! Get out, all of you! All of you, get out of here! You think it's all right to leave her by herself, Doctor? I wish she'd taken the sedative. Well, what do you suppose she thought she saw? They're closing in on her. Look, Doc, I think somebody ought to stay with her. There could be a million people around her. But if they wanted her, they'd get her. What if he's right? Oh, he's too drunk to know what he's talking about. I wonder. I'll join you in a minute. Do you think it would do any good if you went in and talked to her? Well, do you think there really was a head in her suitcase? I don't know. A thing like that would put me right over the edge. But would you sort of stay up here, I mean, in case she needs help? All right. I'll be in my room. Just call it. Thanks. Are you sure there are only seven people in this house? Positive, except for the ghosts. 
I don't believe in ghosts, nor in frightening women. In Nora's case, it's gone far enough, perhaps too far. What do you suggest we do about it, Doctor? Don't frighten her anymore. about this they've taken her in a little while she'll be one of them where's Nor? where is she it's too late it's too late you'll never find her again pritchard if you know where she is you better tell me now she's gone she's gone with them and there's nothing you can do about it She's dead, Mr. Lauren. Your wife hanged herself. Suicide. About this? I don't know. It was, it was dark, but it must have been him. Has anybody seen you since he left you? I heard some people in that room, but I went by and nobody saw me. Mrs. Lauren is dead. How? Lauren said she committed suicide, but I think somebody killed her. Him?
I'm sure you've come to the same conclusion I have. Yeah, I think so. Well, let's all have a meeting, discuss what to do. The living room? Okay, in a minute. Stairs. Now you lock yourself in here and don't let anybody know you're here. If he thinks you're dead, he won't come here. And I'll get back as soon as I can. You'll be all right. And if you have to, you use it. What are you doing in here? Wait. Don't we? What do you mean, coming in here? I didn't want them to take her away. You're drunk. They will if you don't watch her. You're drunk. I... All right, out with it, Bridget. Why did you come into this room? I'm the only one who understands. Understands what? Uh, your wife isn't there anymore. She's already joined them. Look, Bridget, I've had enough of your spook talk. Get out, you sot, and don't come back into this room again. What's her name? Nora. I didn't disturb her since I don't think this concerns her. No, you're right. Mr. Lauren, isn't there some way we can get out of this house now? No, none at all. We could try breaking out. The only door to the outside is made of steel. The bars of the windows are set in solid stone. We've got to stay. I'm not afraid of your ghosts, Bridget. But I am afraid. When we came here a few hours ago, the only thing we had in common was the $10,000 we'd get. Now, however, we share something else. The death of Mrs. Lauren. So far tonight, one of us was almost killed by a falling chandelier. One of us was mysteriously slugged. One of us has been driven to the brink of absolute hysteria. And one of us is dead. Were these accidents? Suicide? And we must stay here for six more hours. Six hours? Six of us. Time enough. Who will be next? How will it happen? Let me ask you a question, Doctor. You were the first one to see my wife there. Did you also see anything that she could have climbed up on and then jumped? No. Did any of them? There was nothing. How then did she get up there so high? Exactly, Mr. Lauren, how? She couldn't have pulled herself up there. She couldn't have dropped from the ceiling. Do you think your wife killed herself? No. She was murdered by one of you. Or you, Mr. Lauren. 
To deliberately kill someone, you must have a reason. We were all strangers to your wife. Only you had a motive for murder. What husband hasn't at some time wanted to kill his wife? What husband hasn't had a thousand opportunities to do it in such a way so that he'd never be suspected? I'm not such a fool as to hang my wife from a ceiling by a rope. The fact remains that you, or one of us, murdered Mrs. Lauren. And that's a matter for the police. So how do we get the police? That's my point. We can't until morning. What began as a silly party given by an eccentric has now involved us all in murder. For once, Pritchard may be right. If another murder's in the works, let's stop it now. Another murder? Why not? Maybe one of us saw too much. Why should even a millionaire want to give each of us $10,000 to spend one night in a gloomy old house? To see some ghosts have a party? No. Have you finished trying me, Doctor? And is the verdict guilty of murder? Oh, this isn't getting us anywhere. Somebody killed Mrs. Lauren, we know that. One of us is guilty and the rest of us are innocent, okay. Now, what we have to do for the next six hours is protect ourselves from each other. Do you really think... I don't think anything. I just know that I'm going to my room. And if anybody comes in, I'll shoot him. Or her. And if we all stay in our rooms, we'll be safe. Because the innocent will have no reason to leave his room. And the guilty will admit his guilt if he or she does. And we all have guns. And we're all agreed. Oh, I wish this night were over. Rooms, guns. I tell you, it doesn't make any difference. They aren't through with us yet. What's the use of saying good night?
Okay. They've all gone to their rooms and locked themselves in. Lance, I've been thinking. It was so dark down there, maybe it wasn't Mr. Lorne. It was him, all right. He tried to kill you, and he did kill his wife. How can you be so sure? She tried to warn me, ask me to help her. The doc thinks he's going to try and kill one of us. Now, there must be a way out of this place, and I'm going to find it and get the police before he does. I'm going with you. What if he finds out you're alive? No, Nora. You're safer here than any place else. Now, just lock yourself in and keep quiet. If I find a way out, I'll come back and get you.
an admission of guilt, Doctor? Certainly not. There's either somebody else in this house or one of us has left his room. Did you hear anything? Organ music? That. And someone walking. You got your... Ready? You look downstairs and I'll look up here. Why not together? There may be only minutes, seconds left of someone's life. Why waste time? Almost over, darling. Every detail was perfect. What's happening? We've done it. A perfect crime. Beautiful. Has she killed him? Not yet. But she will. Get me out of this hanging harness. What's taking that girl so long? What time is it? At first, I couldn't get Nora to want to protect herself with a gun. But after you appeared at the window, everything began to work just as we had planned. You were wonderful. Just the touch that finally drove her into complete hysteria. It'll be worth all of our planning, darling. Where's Nora now? What's happening? On her way to the cellar. So scared, she'll shoot the first thing that moves. And Frederick? On his way to the cellar, too. David, are you sure none of them will suspect us? Of what? An hysterical girl accidentally shoots somebody? Who would suspect that we planned it that way, that we drove her to it? What about my suicide? But just a ghost party gag. We'll claim it was a dummy, since I'm the only one who touched you. And the caretakers? Well, they had no idea what they were really doing. What about Nora? She's not stupid, you know. Darling, believe me, everything we've planned is working perfectly. Nora is sure Frederick murdered you. She thinks Frederick attacked her in the cellar, not me. And now Nora's almost out of her mind with fear. The heads, the music, you're hanging. I tell you, when Frederick walks in there, she'll shoot him. It's taking too long. David, you ought to be there. When you hear the shot, come down to the cellar.
David? David? indeed perfect. Only the victim is alive and the murderers are not. It's a pity you didn't know when you started your game of murder that I was playing too. There must be some way to get in here. Well, it's right along here, somewhere. Uh, uh. Ryan! I've shot Mr. Lorne. He's down in the wine cellar. Alive? I don't think so. It's him. He's alive. You didn't shoot anyone, my dear. I loaded your gun with blanks. I can tell you all now, Trent and my wife were planning to kill me. They failed. Trent tried to throw me in the vat. My wife stumbled and fell. I'm ready for justice to decide if I'm innocent or guilty. Now there are nine. 
There'll be more, many more. They're coming for me now. And then they'll come for you. <laughs> Well, I hope everybody enjoyed tonight's presentation of House on Haunted Hill. This film was a great success for director William Castle, and it probably would have been even without Emerjo. Now, the film was remade, sort of, in 1999. It didn't receive the same rave reviews as the original, uh, but the box office success was uh, through the roof nonetheless. Now, for a few fun facts. The exterior shots of the house were filmed at the historic Ennis House in California, the house was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright and built in 1924, and it remains a popular destination for horror fans today. The Emerjo gimmick, now that was a huge success, although once word spread about the flying skeleton, kids uh, tried to knock it down by throwing popcorn boxes, soda cups, other objects, whatever they had on hand, it must have been a real scene. And lastly, here's one not many people are aware of, legendary director of the macabre, Alfred Hitchcock, was so impressed with William Castle's success in promoting his B-movies that Hitchcock was inspired to make one of his own. The name of Hitchcock's B-movie? Psycho. That's right. Well, thanks for joining me for this special presentation of Monster Kid Theater. I'll be back next Saturday night, October 9th, with an all-new show and another horror classic. If you enjoyed the show and like the channel, please take a second, hit the subscribe button, and follow Monster Kid Studios on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, be sure to visit MonsterKidStudios.com and pick up some authentic Monster Kid merchandise made right here at the studio. I'll see you Monster Kids next Saturday night. Thanks for watching.